Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder to a little bit of an untypical video because I'm recording live post battle from the replay. I actually recorded this battle, which is one of the purest gameplays I managed to get in quite a while. And this in the new German premium light tank, the TAM 2 IP or Tanque Argentino Mediano. So, a medium tank in disguise. We'll come to this back in just a moment. For whatever reason, when I played this battle, Shadowplay, because I'm back on my old PC, decided to record the second screen and not this one. And um, the green light was, well, lighting green. Whatever. <laughs> so, I'm uh, first in the cap and I intend to cap it for my team. As you will see later on, this will be the first of a lot of many important decisions that I make in this battle. We're playing on Tunisia. And as far as short range maps go, I actually like this. So, by the way, the unusual thing is that this is more or, li more or less a one take. When I usually do the commentary in the video editing program, I have numerous takes, um, potentially. And if I say something not correct or I just want to edit something, then I can do so. In a one take, that's not possible. So if I say something weird or I have to correct myself, excuse me. So this premium tank, um, in a nutshell, I still think that the Leopard A1A1 L44 is still overall the better premium tank. By the way, I see you, my dude. But this one is a nice tank. However, when I played the first time, the tech tree one, I was not really convinced by it. Why would you use a light tank that has overall the same characteristics, in some cases even worse than the equivalent main battle tank, but on top of this has hull break? Now, since then, quite a few things have changed. Um, hull break got replaced by overpressure, and we'll see how this affects this tank. And um, also, I think the, the environment has changed a little bit. Also, the great difference between this tank and the normal TAM is that you have a little bit of composite side screens on the turret, which make your turret a little bit more tanky. And also thanks to the removal of hull break and the addition of overpressure, you know, old school Soviet APHE, while still being very lethal, is now something that you can make work against those Soviet MBTs because you have the engine anti-transmission in the front and they can catch all the shrapnels. Talking about shrapnels, um, the enemy team is murdering my team left, right and center on the middle and the left of the map, whereas then the rest of the remaining team or the majority of my team is now with me in C. Just that there are no confusions, I have here also the opportunity to show the markers and not. However, this is not just quite like in uh, realistic battles that you have markers for your own teammates, except on a minimap. Um, but here I, I have them not. Oh, by the way, fuel explosion. That was an ammo rack. Okay, that was an ammo rack, Gaijin. Ammo rack and fuel are different things. <laughs> okay. And there is an artist rack. No, that was a tank shell into my transmission. I'm on fire, I can extinguish it. And there is an, another T44-100. Whatever, Orbel, that was smart. And I catch another APHE into the front of the tank. So this feature has saved me now twice. Battle rating 8.7, I can see, you know, 7.7 .7 tanks. Seems to be a down tier. Anyway, where was I? Yes, the TAM to IP. Now, Again, it plays a bit more like a medium tank thanks to the mobility in comparison to other main battle tanks. And it has profited from, as you can see, the hull break being replaced by the overpressure. And there you can see how much damage I'll take in just the next few seconds that otherwise probably would have killed me. So here I have uh, problems staying on this uh, very nice position. And I want to scout. There they are. Come on, can I scout? Yes, there I can. And I get hit. Gun barrels out. Where is it? Yeah, there is one. But it was also another position that I get shot from. Yeah, 
I scout him. And just seconds later, I get a kill assist. Nice. So again, the feature has saved me again for the third time. And with all the damage, I only lost one out of four crew members. That is quite something. By the way, this is not the usual expert qualification. Yes, it's a level 150 crew, but no expert qualification, no ace qualification. And that increases my theoretical reload from 6.7 for an ace uh, crew to 7.7 .7 seconds in this gameplay. Make that five kills my first ace. Okay, so far I tried to defend C and I'm thinking about mm, what to do next, what to do next, how should I support my team in the best possible way. Well, the prime objective for the enemy team is because everybody wants to win hard on online games, C. So I just have to stay here and protect it. I hear a helicopter and despite it being one of ours, I smell danger. I intend to go back into the cap to get the one crew member back because that commander gives me overall quite a few percentage of overall skill boost to the remaining members of my crew. And I, I, I have the feeling, I have the intuitive feeling that this might come in handy later. So I park here and well, get back the one crew member. A nice feature about this tank is that it has smoke shells and you have two launches A4 smoke grenades and they are very important to also get back. So the Gepard is busy roasting here on Object Nano 6 which he just did and therefore I have some more seconds to get back the stuff. SBA shooting in that direction, I smell some danger but uh, let's get the hell out of here and let's be somewhere else. When you are around the cap the enemy team expects there to be something always. I would do this as well. So now I want to investigate the possibility of influencing the battle around B. Now the bad thing is that my Gepard just got killed and I just, uh, I just don't realize it just yet because I'm focused on not getting killed on my way towards behind B. And it's a roundabout now where C gets decapped and I instantly turn around. Again, horsepower to ton ratio of 23.6 from a 720 horsepower strong engine for the 30.5 ton tank. That is decent, that's okay, but it's not outmost brilliant. Now watch this. This camouflage that I just bought, because I really like it, seems to work here nicely because this Centurion Well, I thought I'd die here, okay? Can I stop capturing B? Sadly, the enemy is not there. Planes coming in, killing an enemy. It was a record in this position. No, it was the IT-1. And uh, this Soviet heavy tank has no idea that I'm here. First shot disabling him, and despite the lengthy reload, I can reload before his heavy machine gun turns around, blowing up the ammo, killing the crew, just to make sure and we are capping again. Now again, more and more buildings getting taken down by bombs, artist strikes, you name it. My cover is deteriorating and I drop smoke shells behind me and keep one charge because you never know. Again, because now everybody on the enemy team knows that there is something in C and C isn't that big. I hear something, so I poke. So I pop the second and last smoke launchers, reverse, so that I change my last known location and I nearly got killed here by the IL-2 that just got shot down a little bit too late for avoiding this rocket strike by the glorious Chinese P-47 because amazing. And again I wait in the cap to get back the smoke launchers, that's very important. They always come in handy. Okay. So, Glory is driving by me, no doubt about that. And I want to get the hell out of there. And again, I want to help my team around B. There are now, I think, two of my teammates coming to, well, hopefully protect, protect C, but you never know. 
some tanks are shooting in the direction of our aircraft, giving away their presence. And I think to myself, well, I used to be on this really nice spot. And this spot, you can still make the seven degrees of gun depression work. I mean, this rear mounted turret looks cool and all, but you know, the Leopard series of tanks have nine degrees. And sometimes that can make the difference. Seven is not as awful as the Soviet ones, but is quite far enough away from the golden standard of minus 10 so that you really notice it. Just like I noticed that C got again decap and it's again a heavy tank and his reaction time was not fast enough. And we stay here in the cap to recap it. But the cap was not completely decapped so I don't get all the RP that you know I think I should deserve, right? So that's my third cap and eight kills. I always wanted to be somewhere else, but I never could, right? So duh. <laughs> and there is another heavy tank. Is it the same guy? Could be, but I'm not quite sure. Well, it was somebody else and it was in an IS-3. Okay. So I hope I could help out here my teammate. But there is still some fire exchange. Come on, get up there. Oh, come on, come on, Gaijin. Yes, we get up there. And that looks like a BMP of some sort. What are you? BMP2? Okay. Can I, can I engage him without getting shot? Come on, move up there. There you can see seven degrees of gun depression. Yeah, wobbling around. No, still not good enough. He reversed just enough to survive this. Can I get here? Come on. Come on, don't be shy. Don't be shy. By the way, this tank has a laser rangefinder where I could adapt the range automatically just by rangefinding and that was too high. And I instantly want to get back into cover, but that was another kill assist. My third in this match. Well, the first one that I stated should be a kill assist actually wasn't. But regardless, um, my team bought us enough time so that the ticket bleed has stopped for now. And I now have to investigate B. I now have to deal with that situation. Hopefully nobody's there. Come on. Let me pause there. I want to get to there from an unexpected direction. I see the marking. Is there somebody? Nobody frontline camping. Late, late gameplay. So not a lot of people are left alive. That makes the individual skill stand out more. At least some people say. <laughs> and now this is where... where everything counts my team has my team has now uh, a under their control there he is and unlucky unlucky in so many ways and he smokes up now I need to be aggressive here but I also need to get in cover from enemy campers or potential campers behind this rock I have the suspicious feeling that he's there he needs to repair his gun breach which was damaged as I could find out via the hit cam. So where is he? I see that I hit him. Now I see him. Can I adjust? I went forward a bit out of reflex. Don't ask me. Must be here. Come on. Uh, just a split second before the smoke cleared. But his turret ring's still out. Can I reload? And that's the double ace. And now we get B. I smoke up instantly with one charge and then go towards the other direction. And now A gets decapped again. But we initiated now thanks to the possession of C. Largely thanks to me, if I might say so myself. Uh, we initiated the ticket bleed on the enemy team. Yeah, that's a friendly, I know. But I heard another engine sound. He was briefly on fire, so I thought it might be another tank. That's the last charge. Come on, can we do it? Somebody is protecting C. 
I am in B. The enemy cannot decap it in time, even though they manage now to cap A. But that was my fourth cap. Now I refill the smoke. I just want to survive for the last few seconds. And believe it or not, that's game. And with a double ace, three assists and four caps, I won the game. And look at this result. 206,000 silver lines and over 22,000 RP. So those are the combination of the double ace and the four caps. Battle activity, 91%, whatever Gaijin's calculations say. And uh, I think that I was really happy to get a heavy metal hero, a survivor and a double ace out of this with four caps. That says quite something. I'm really proud of this gameplay and I hope that you had also quite the uh, interest in watching and listening to my battle commenting where it's a bit more life in the action um you know getting you through my thinking process of decision making and uh, some people say that they really think that this is very enjoyable and helpful so let me know in the comment section what you thought about this video presentation this video format and um, trying out and experimenting lately a little bit you know short videos long videos entire battle videos just um, a little bit of a summary let me know what you really like let me know what you think about this video and again please hit the like button it's just for you a click but it helps the channel out massively you know where to subscribe and if you want to see more well just watch more and finally that's it for me today so again thanks for watching thanks for listening and we'll see each other on the waves in the skies and on the battlefields of war thunder